Assalamu alaikum. How's my second family doing? Well, guess what? We're just halfway into the holy month of Ramadan, uh, and I just w would like to say this. You know, I hope everyone had uh, a great first half of this uh, blessed month, uh, and uh, I hope that everyone is enjoying hashtag LNT. Uh, yesterday, uh, the episode was a bit, uh, you know, rocket skyrocketing, but you know, we'll uh, we'll continue it off today. But tonight, uh, we're trying to talk about a special personality. Uh, a personality that uh, really affected the life, uh, the lives of every single individual uh, that follows the Shia school of thought and also other schools of thought as well. But before we get to tell you who that personality is or when was he born or how was he born, let's go and jump in to see what's trending. And then we'll be back very short. So do stay tuned. Welcome back, dear viewers. Um, uh, once again, we do welcome everyone for joining us tonight live from this blessed holy city. Um, I'm looking fresh tonight. You'll get to know why in a few moments. Uh, but um, if you guys want to go from Shanghai to LA uh, in five hours, Tokyo to San Francisco in a bit of four, uh, over four, uh, five hours, five and a half hours, from Sydney to LA, in six hours and, and three quarters of an hour. In that plane right there, this plane, the supersonic, uh, as uh, they're calling it, the boom, supersonic boom, uh, it's uh, the fastest airplane uh, in the world right now where it takes you from Shanghai to LA in five hours. That's crazy. Uh, or from Sydney to LA in 6.75 hours. So six hours and 45 minutes. That's crazy, uh, but uh, they're saying that this airplane and the cost of someone going on that airplane is actually half of, uh, of what it cost uh, on a Concorde, uh, and they're picking it up where Concorde left off. Uh, so hopefully we can one day, you know, hashtag LNT, uh, get that plane and come from Karbala, uh, you know, and, and fly all the way. But, uh, or, or maybe, you know, you, you never know, maybe the participant. Uh, who wins? Uh, you know, will we'll come to Karbala. We're we're not we're not trying to give any uh, you know give any false information. But you know, he might come on that plane. We never know. Uh, but this, if the winner comes out at the end of Eid, then you're gonna have to wait for another year because at the beginning of next year they're planning to launch that plane. But what else is trending? The next item is actually kind of crazy because uh, um, one of the most expensive houses. In America, America's most expensive house, it's on discount. So whoever loves discounts, go and buy this house. I'm one of the guys that love discounts. Um, so if, if you're trying to buy that house, discount. You know how much discount is? $62 million. $62 million discount. Make, this, this house actually broke uh, the world record or America's record. $250 million as it was listed earlier on. But now, it's, a, it's, it's, it's on a discount, has its own helipad, a Ferrari showroom at the bottom, has a Bugatti too. Um, I can see a, a Ducati down there as well. Uh, but, you know, to buy that house on a discount, $62 million, you can buy, you, you, you can buy 62 houses with $62 million. Uh, but, you know, it's a, for, for some it's a bargain. You know, why not? Go, go, go and buy that. You know, have, have a nice dinner. But if you do buy it, uh, invite hashtag LNT so we can have dinner together. But I'm kidding. Let's go and jump into tonight's topic. When we look at the biographies of Islamic figures throughout history, we almost or we tend to look at their accomplishments, their traits and lineage. If we were to look through history, we would find a prime example, Sheikh Abbas al-Qummi, who is uh, really, uh, his accomplishment affected the lives of every single Shia Muslim living on this planet, and you know, also non-Shias as well. Uh, him compiling the du'as and the ziyars of Ahl Bayt, Mafatih al-Jinan, which is present in every Shia household in the world, and in every mosque, uh, and in every Islamic center, Shia Islamic center. Now, he was known, Sheikh Abbas Qumi was known for his piety, for his sincere love towards 
Prophet Muhammad and his Ahl Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. But if we were to go to his lineage, his dad, Muhammad Rada al-Qummi, uh, and his dad was just like how we have Maraja at this time, um, like grand jurist. He was the grand jurist of his time where people get to go, uh, got to go to him and ask him in regards to their religion and their religious uh, problems. But his mom is called Bani Zinat. Uh, and one of the most pious and religious women of her time. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking, we're trying to talk about an individual uh, who, you know, as, as you can see the decorations in Ben Haramain, shout out to the whole two holy shrines uh, for making it beautiful. Um, uh, but it's kind of far, but you can see the colors. Um, I'm, I'm decorating myself tonight uh, for, 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 for this blessed occasion. But um, whose occasion is it, though? We haven't said anything. Tonight, we're trying to talk about a personality um, that has really not been looked at by many, and unfortunately, but we're trying to talk about the birth anniversary of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba, the fourth infallible, the second Imam of Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon him, the son of Imam Ali Nabi Talib, and the son of Fatim Zahra, peace and blessings be upon them all. But uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, your question for tonight, very simple, very easy. What do you know about Imam al Hassan. Hit him. What do you know about Imam al Hassan? Very simple. What do you know? The question is, what do you know? To let us know what you know, uh, plus 964 774 067 1836 is the number to call us at through WhatsApp. You pick up that phone, open WhatsApp, dial that number shown below. Uh, shoot us a text message, shoot us a voice message, call us live during the show. Uh, we are live on Facebook as well, so you can go check us out there. Give that thumbs up, share uh, that reactions, uh, uh, that, that love, that heart, uh, you know, because we love in those hearts. Um, and uh, do all that good stuff because anyone that comments or sends us a, a voice message, text message, or calls us during the live show, their names will place in this fishbowl right here for a chance to win a free trip to Karbala exclusive on our house. But let's take a quick break. And we'll be back very short. So do stay tuned. Welcome back, dear viewers. We are live from the holy city of Karbala, of course, with you, Mu'a Ahmed Ali. And tonight, we're trying to celebrate the birth anniversary of a very special individual, Imam al-Hassan al-Mushtaba. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, before the break today, I was, I was uh, you know, I gave up some time to try and survey uh, my friends and those who uh, I know uh, and trying to find out how much people actually know about Imam al-Hassan uh, and I was surprised some people actually knew uh, some and some didn't know a lot uh, which is unfortunate but tonight you're in for a treat because you're watching hashtag LNT and uh, you know when when I go up on the pulpit when I go up on the LNT pulpit uh, you know I, I, I like to uh, show off my knowledge you know what I mean but uh, tonight if we were to go back in history and see uh, when was Imam al Hassan born? A very simple question. Um, for those who didn't know, well, you're about to learn. Um, Imam al Hassan Mushtaba was born on the 15th of Ramadan, which is tomorrow. Uh, the 15th of Ramadan in the third year of Hijrah. Uh, and very beautiful if we were to look at who his lineage is. Uh, I mentioned that earlier on. His dad is the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Talib, peace and blessings be upon him his mom was Fatim to Zahra the greatest woman of all time his grandfather was Prophet Muhammad uh, and uh, you know and it, if we were to go back it just you know it's 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 a lineage filled um, with with uh, with knowledge with wisdom and of course with bravery as we're going to talk about later on but when Imam al Hassan peace and blessings be upon him the first grandson of Prophet Muhammad, when he was born, Prophet Muhammad was, you know, if, if, if you were to say it now, he was jumping from joy. You know, he, he was so happy that Imam al-Hassan was born. So what happened, Prophet Muhammad gets informed by Jibra'il that Imam al-Hassan is born, comes to the house of Imam Ali and Fatim al Zahra, and he looks at Imam al-Hassan and he's just filled with joy. Now, Fatim al Zahra asks Imam Ali, what are we going to name this baby? 
Imam Ali says, I can't beat the Prophet to naming the baby. So the Prophet has to name the baby. When the Prophet, when Imam Ali and Fatima asked the Prophet, he says, I'm not going to beat God at naming this, this baby. So they waited until Jibra'il came down saying that name this son of yours or this grandson of yours or Muhammad. Name him Shubbar. He said, what does that mean in Arabic? He said, Hassan. Hassan is the name of Imam Ali. Well, the, the original name, the, the Hebrew name, if you will, is Shubbar. And then you have the, or the Aramaic name, uh, Shubbar. And then you have the Arabic name, Hassan. Um, and this is very beautiful to get to see because uh, usually it's the father who gets to, you know, in any Islamic household, um, when a, a newborns come, the father recites the adhan in the right ear and the iqama in the left ear. Uh, but in this time, Prophet Muhammad did it. Um, in the ear of Imam al-Hassan, the right uh, adhan and, and the left uh, iqama. Uh, and he said, I will name this as um, the will of Allah. I will name him Hassan. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, during the life of Imam al-Hassan, um, not a lot of biographies have been written on this individual. Not a lot of uh, people or Mawlana's, uh, all due respect to all of them, um, when they do go on the pulpit, they do mention the life of Imam al-Hassan, but they focus on the treaty and how that saved Islam. That's great. But we Shia have to understand, what did Imam al-Hassan do? Because really, after the, 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 the death of Imam Ali, no one knows what happened in the life of Imam al-Hassan. We'll get to talk about that very short. But if we were to continue, look at his knowledge. Imam al-Hassan presented his knowledge at a very young age. When Imam Ayn al-Talib was there, people tried at that time, they wanted to test Imam al-Hassan at his youth. They wanted to see what he's all about. Is he the real Imam after Imam Ali or is this just, you know, some random stuff that uh, people are saying? So they went up to Imam al-Hassan. They started asking him questions that they don't even know the answers to, which is really the crazy part. So they asked Imam al-Hassan, what are the 10 strong things that are stronger than one another? 10 strong things that are stronger than one another. Imam al-Hassan replied to them, and I quote, he said, among the strong things is stone. Even stronger than stone um, is iron, which is used to break the stone. Even stronger is the fire which melts the iron. Even stronger is the water which extinguishes the fire. Even stronger is the clouds that carry the water with them. And even stronger is the air that floats the cloud. Even stronger than that is the angel that moves the air. And even stronger is the angel who will give death to the angel who moves the air. And even stronger than the death uh, is the angel of death. And even stronger than the angel of death is the will of Allah that governs everything. At that moment, these guys were baffled. They didn't know what to say to this youth. The young man, Imam al Hassan was, and he was able to give them ten things they didn't even know about. You know, at that time, you know, maybe they knew, but they weren't. You know, uh, they didn't have the full knowledge that these things actually could have existed or th that philosophically, you know, sophisticated. But we do remind everyone for, for to call in tonight uh, and letting us know what you think about Imam al Hassan. We are getting a few messages, so we'll get to, uh, and we are receiving. Uh, Facebook comments, uh, hello, hello back, uh, but do let us know what you think. Uh, hellos, hello back, but let us know what you think. Now, if we were to go back and look at the accomplishments of Imam al-Hassan. Now, the accomplishments of this individual, if we were to go back in history, as inshallah the expert will get to tell us later on in the show, <coughs> one of the great accomplishments during the life of Imam al-Hassan, which not a lot of people know about, is the fact of his bravery. During the life of Imam al-Hassan, just ask anyone, if you're sitting next to someone right now, ask them, what do you know about the bravery of Imam al-Hassan? I'll give you a second to, uh, to, to, to ask them that. One second, go ahead. Let me drink some water while you ask. Did you ask, did he answer? If he said he was brave in the battles uh, with his father, then that's the, that's the answer, that's correct. But if he stayed silent and said, I don't know, uh, then continue watching. But... Imam al-Hassan, peace and blessings be upon him, during the, the, the battles with his father, he was present in almost every battle, um, especially after Prophet Muhammad died. In every battle, Imam al-Hassan was there. 
And what's interesting, when Imam al Hassan used to go in battle, he would tell Al Abbas and he would tell Imam al Hussein to control, he says, control your brother, Al Hassan. Because when he is in the battlefield, he goes off. He does not see anyone in front of him. He needs to get to the flag of the other uh, army. This was the bravery of Imam al-Hassan. He, need, he needed to be controlled by Imam al Hussein, And of course he's an infallible Imam, so it's, it's not means that he's losing his senses, absolutely not. But it goes to show the level of bravery that he contained within himself. Now, another accomplishment of Imam al Hassan, which a lot of people these days, um, and even at that time, ridiculed Imam al Hassan for, even Shias unfortunately, when they say, how could Imam al Hassan go and shake the hand of a tyrant. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, the guy that really destroyed the Shias back then, was the reason behind the murder of Imam Ali. You know, and, and the, part of the prosecution of almost every single Shia during the time of Imam Ali and during the time of Imam Hassan. The person who really didn't care what Islam had to say and everything that he did was against the religion of Islam. So, Imam al Hassan one day, when, when he saw uh, the people being deviated by Muawiyah and a lot of people actually leaving his army, he said, you know, gather an army, we'll go fight. But when he saw the closest people to him betrayed him, at that time he said, who am I going to go and fight with? So fighting at that time, he didn't want to cause a civil war between the two Muslim uh, the, the, between the Muslims themselves. So what did he do? He went and signed a peace treaty with Muawiyah, the tyrants of the time. What, the, what was that peace treaty? That peace treaty was to say, in short, when Muawiyah dies and Imam al-Hassan was still alive, the caliph, the caliphate, would go to Imam al-Hassan. And if, I, if Imam al-Hassan dies and Muawiyah is still in, in power, when Muawiyah dies, it goes to Imam al-Hussein. So what did Muawiyah do? Muawiyah flayed the evil, killed Imam al-Hassan, died, and he passed it on to his son Yazid. So he broke that peace treaty, ending up in Karbala. But we did just receive a text message from Taqi from Canada. He says, uh, Imam al-Hassan, was very generous. I think he was the most generous Imam of all Imams. Okay. Thank you very much, Taqi, uh, for joining us tonight. So your name will be placed. Taqi from Canada. Okay. Thank you very much, Taqi from Canada, for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, uh, uh, we are receiving uh, a few Facebook comments. We'll get to read them out uh, very soon, inshallah. But to continue off uh, where we were uh, discussing, and we were discussing uh, the later life of Imam al Hassan and how one of the major accomplishments of Imam al Hassan, although facing a lot of ridicule, and a lot of taunts from the, the followers of Imam, uh, Imam Ali Talib at that time, um, he still fought through and he saved the blood of the Muslims at that time. And he saved the Muslims from a civil war. Now, if we were to move on and uh, look at the traits of Imam Al Hassan, peace and blessings be upon him, one of the most prominent traits, as Taqi just told us in that message, was generosity. To the level where, you know, th th there's a narration, a tradition that says after the martyrdom of Imam Ali, the orphans and, and, and the poor individuals and, and the needies on the street, um, they got sick, or sorry, they didn't get sick, they, um, no one was taking care of them after Imam Ali was martyred. This is actually not 100% true, because after Imam Ali was, was, was martyred, Imam al Hassan was the one that took care of the poor. He took the responsibility of his father where he went around at night 
giving them food, giving the needy and the orphans food, that just moved on to Imam al Hassan. So that narration is not 100% correct. But also another trait of Imam al Hassan, which not a lot of people know, um, is, the, is, is, is the fact that he, whatever he has, anything he has was from God. So he, as, a, as an in a narration, he says, everything that I have is from God. So why don't I give whatever God has given me back to the poor and back to the needy, which is very beautiful. But let's, um, let's, let's uh, check out the, uh, the, the audio message first. Let's, let's go uh, see what, uh, who was it from? Oh, Sister Batul once again from the USA. What does she say? Assalamu alaikum, this is Batud from the USA. Um, to answer tonight's question, who is Al Hassan Ali Salam? He is the first, he's the eldest son of Fatima Tazhara and Imam Ali Ali Salam. He's also the second Imam by the Twelvers, and he's considered the first Imam by the Ismailis. Uh, imam Al Hassan Ali Salam was known for donating to the poor, his kindness to the poor, and bondmen, and for his knowledge, tolerance, and bravery. And he died at the age of 25 and buried in Jannat al Baqiyah. Um, his wife, Jadda, uh, Jadda, uh, is commonly accused for his death by poisoning him. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Batul, uh, for uh, letting us know a lot of information, uh, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, and very deep and thorough information you, you, you mentioned there. Uh, thanks to uh, SheikhGoogle.com. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I, w I was kidding by that. Uh, but let's go uh, and uh, check out the expert and what he had to say about tonight's topic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al tahirin so what do you know about Imam al-Hassan? Did you know that he was the first grandchild to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Did you know that he was the first connection between Nubuwa and Imama? The first result of the tying the knot between Imam Ali alayhi salam who represents Imama and Fatima al-Zahra who represents Nubuwa because she's the daughter of Rasulullah. Did you know that Rasulullah took Imam al Hassan as he was holding his hand, or his hand was held by Imam Ali alayhi salam? Rasulullah was carrying Imam al Hussein to Nasara, Najran, when they performed the Mubahala with Rasulullah and they decided to have a contest in the middle of the desert to see who is on the truth. Did you know that Imam al Hassan was a fierce warrior and was extremely brave and stood with his father and fought in Safin and Al Jamal and Nahrawan? Did you know that Imam al Hassan was so brave that he would ask Imam al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas to go and hold Imam al Hassan to make sure that he doesn't sacrifice his life in those battles? Did you know that Imam al Hassan? was deceived by the people of Kufa and his father's army while many of them switched to the side of Muawiyah and they sold out and they didn't stand by Imam al-Hassan. Did you know that Imam al-Hassan was deceived by some of his own companions? Some of them would come and visit him and they would say, As-salamu alayki ya mudilla al mu'mineen Peace be upon you, O oh, the one who humiliated the believers. Did you know that Imam al Hassan was a victim of rumors that he would marry every day, marry and divorce, marry and divorce? This was a Umawi propaganda from Bani Umayyah to make Imam al Hassan seem as a person who loves this dunya and has nothing to do with the Akhirah. Did you know that Imam al Hassan, in his will, he wanted to be buried? next to his grandfather Rasulullah, but he was not allowed. Did he know that Imam al-Hassan's body 
was hit with 72 arrows? Did you know that before his death, before his burial, Imam al Hussein had to put on the kefen of Imam al Hassan again and remove the arrows and remove the blood from his blessed body? Salamullahi alayhi, may the peace of Allah be upon him and on his, on his progeny and on his brother, Imam al Hassan. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al tahirin Thank you very much Sayyidina for joining us tonight and actually very beneficial information uh, that was presented in there because uh, it really uh, tells us a lot about who Imam al Hassan was um, and uh, I like the fact where he says did you know uh, because now, did you know those facts uh, if you didn't, then you need to really look at the biography of this individual because it's, um, it's an obligation on the shoulders of every single Muslim uh, on this planet to know who was the first grandson of Prophet Muhammad. But uh, let's read some of the Facebook comments that we got. Um, Ayman Zahra, he says, uh, or Ayman, I think it's a guy, right? Yeah. Or maybe her, I don't know. Uh, but she says, uh, or he says, Imam Hassan, peace and blessings be upon Alayhi salam, the most generous Imam and patient, Imam in every aspect, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. Okay, that should we count as a participation? All right. Ayman Zahra. Maybe it's a guy, I don't, I don't know. All right, so in here, okay. Okay, Ayman Zahra, thank you very much uh, for, you can probably see it there, but thank you very much uh, for participating. Uh, another comment <coughs> from Fawziya Faizi. Uh, she says, Salam, Mabruk on the birth of the first Imam. Yes, he was a brave soldier. Uh, yet he was very concerned about his people and made sacrifice to, re to reinstate peace uh, and well-being of his people. His own wife had a hand in his death, which was the result of his death, but a brave heart he was. Thank you very much, Fawziya, um, for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you very much once again. All right, so we are, but let's see what we, text message we received from. Razia from Norway, again, thank you very much. So she says, Imam al Hassan is the first infallible being born to both infallible mother and father. Um, he was a oh, Muslim, okay, uh, as after his death, his wish of being buried besides his grandfather وسلم, wasn't fulfilled and his body was showered with arrows unfortunately um, but thank you very much uh, Razia from Norway for joining us tonight your name has been placed in this bowl uh, so inshallah we'll give the chance for everyone else uh, we are getting another text message from Zakia. Zakia from Norway, what did she say? Okay, so we'll what's the issue? Okay, so okay, so Zakia will read off my phone quickly. Zakia says uh, from Norway, Zakia from Norway, uh, wish you all uh, many happy greetings uh, on this blessed day. Imam al Hassan was generous, he is uh, the Muslim who was betrayed by his closest and Madlum now that he doesn't get the zuwar uh, that his brother Imam Hussein has, inshallah we are all blessed with his ziyarah soon. Very nice um, and it's true um, that not a lot of people get to visit him but uh, you know uh, it's, it's one of the maybe when Imam Mahdi reappears we can all go and do a, a special hashtag LNT episode uh, near his shrine but uh, thank you very much Zakia from Norway. Okay, 
thank you very much, uh, Zakia, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, uh, at the end, at the last thing we're trying to say tonight is that uh, we need, and as I mentioned earlier, it's incumbent upon us Shia to, uh, especially every single Muslim, um, to really get to understand who the first grandson of Prophet Muhammad uh, and to really know, uh, because a lot of people don't know much about Imam al Hassan, so it's important to keep in our minds um, that go spend an hour, an hour of your time, and read the biography of this great individual. Lastly, thank you very much for joining us tonight. This was Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes tomorrow at 2 a.m. Karbala time. Take care. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.